a model solution that was uh, published in other research and hypothesized, even though I didn't do a confirmatory factor analysis to really test it in a hypothesis-driven method. Uh, overall, I would say my factor solutions produced three factors along the lines of the items, but there is some um, uh, uh, some perturbance uh, in the, some messiness in the factor solution because uh, difficulty describing feelings these last two items are loading both on factor one and two and that's not simple that's not ideal simple structure uh, it's possible that other rotations using promax or a different uh, default value in direct oblomin if I change that to one two three or something like that I might get a better uh, and simpler um, factor solution, but um, my hunch is it won't because I know these data uh, in a fair amount of detail, and I know that there's uh, these data aren't perfectly uh, in accordance with simple structure. And simple structure is when you've got nice big factor loadings that should be there, and then the remaining factor loadings that are small are actually zero. Ideally, these would just be all zero, but it's um, the real world's not like that. Uh, and we, but we can test uh, the hypothesis that these are zero in a confirmatory factor analysis approach because you don't expect it to be exactly zero. There will be fluctuations due to sent random sampling. Uh, so that's the pattern matrix. The structure matrix it can be interesting at times. Uh, I talk more about it in the PCA uh, video, so I won't talk about it here. But basically, it's just the correlations between the variables and the factors, whereas the pattern matrix matrix is more like uh, beta weights in multiple regression, uh, whereas these are more like correlations between the variables and the factors. Um, sometimes it can be informative to look at that. Here we've got the correlations between the variables. So, so here um, we can see that factor 1 and factor 2 are correlated at point 3, so difficulty identifying feelings is correlated with externalizing or uh, oriented thinking. Uh, and in factor factor one and three uh, are negatively correlated, and this is where factor analysis can kind of throw you for a loop. You'd be going, "Oh, what? Well, so it's negatively correlated? Difficulty identifying feelings is negatively correlated with difficulty describing feelings? I wouldn't have guessed that." And it's not true. It's because the uh, factor loadings on the third factor are negative, as I pointed out earlier, and so uh, a positive. A negative correlation with a negative factor loading factor is actually a positive correlation. So you have to be careful here uh, and interpret the correlations based on the um, values associated with the factor loadings. This is a great example, I think, of how you, people can kind of get fooled. Um, and again, why it's arbitrary to interpret the the the, the, the negative and positive values associated with a factor solution as relatively arbitrary as long as, long as you're consistent in how you change negative to positive and the positive ones to, to negative. Uh, but in this case, I know that the difficulty di describing feelings and identifying feelings is positively correlated because the great weight in the negative co uh, factor loadings here were all negative. Um, so I'm going to end the factor analysis here. It was probably a fairly in-depth look at factor analysis in SPSS. Uh, give my opinions on some things. Uh, I hope you um, consider doing factor analysis on your own data. Uh, and I hope you've learned something in it that will help you do factor analysis on your own data. Thanks for listening.